importance, Mazli talked about the importance of civil society in the making of a Muslim democracy, if you want to use that word. Uh, the Arabs in the 1930s, in the 1980s, until the 1930s realized that in order for them to develop the waqa, you have to work with the state. The state is an entity that is there that will be permanent even if the regime change. And it's useless to circumvent the state. So what the Arabs did was basically to work with the British to agree that waqafs were established in Singapore. And that is not all. They didn't only work with the state, they worked with the Malays Indians. And Indians were powerful uh, proponents of waqafs, especially from India, especially those from Gujarat. They came to Singapore and they were establishing a lot of waqafs in Singapore, especially the Marikan family, uh, the Peppardi the Peppardi family, and of course the Namazis. Uh, they were very rich, some of them came from Iran, and they were also working together with the Arabs, and of course working together with the market. And this is very controversial because in those days, some of the ulama, especially in the early 1910s, were criticizing the Arab Hadramis for becoming like the capitalists. But the, the Arab Hadramis were reasoning to them that the market were, or was already globalized by 1910. By 1914, in the eve of the, second, the First World War, uh, the world was already so globalized. And the Arabs felt that if we don't work together with the market, there's no way that we can actually build the waqaf in Singapore. So Arabs got into sh the shipping trade, uh, and because they got into the shipping trade, they were also controlling the, the movement from Singapore to Mecca. Right? And, and they got into so many different kinds of cooperations and things like that. They, in fact, they set up their own corporations. So that's now we were talking about corporations. For Arab Hadramis in those days, well, we set up our own corporations. <laughs> why, why must we resist corporations? If you don't like it, own it. Right? If, you don't, if you cannot deal with it, Make your own. Right? And of course, the second reason why Wakafs could develop so quickly was this whole idea of corporate social responsibility. Now we use this word in, in human resources. In those days, for the Arab Hadramis, it is not enough for you to be rich. You are only rich when you are helping people out there. And this is what made them so powerful. In Shakartum la Azidan Nakum. If you are shukur, Allah will add more to your wealth. And they multiply their wealth by helping people. So these Arabs were very smart. Uh, they, they were very rich, but they, they built their houses in poor neighborhoods. And the reason for this is because when you build a house in poor neighborhoods, you can employ people very, very easily. So the al Sagafs were very good at this. They built their house in the center. If you go to Singapore, go to Gilang. Uh, there's a road at Gilang called Lorong Engku Aman. This was the place of Engku Aman, one of the al uh, rich al Sagafs. He would live around uh, the poor people out there and employ them in the plantations that he built nearby. So very smart. You are rich, but you help people. By helping people, you actually enrich yourself even more. So there's this whole uh, workplace, community, market, environment kind of cycle that was there. And from there, the Wakaf actually developed. Uh, there was also this attempt to link the Wakaf to the global market system. And I want to dwell on this a little bit. When the uh, Aljunids, the Al-Sagaf, the Al-Kafs, especially when they set up Wakafs in Singapore, especially when they set up mosques, they make sure that the mosques were not places of worship. Mosques were also places of business. They used the mosques to develop printing presses. They used the mosques to bring people from overseas to come and some of them are non-Muslims. They will come and look at the mosque and they like to, 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 to come to Singapore because of the mosque as a tourist uh, attraction. And from there, they actually fuel their businesses. So, Wakaf is not only for the, for the purposes of helping the poor. Wakaf is not only for the purposes of helping the non-Muslims. But Wakaf is used to generate a global economic system. And this is very, very inventive of them, right? So, the hard trade, the shipping trade, the publication industries, all get their income from the Wakaf and they generate income for the Wakaf. I will show you a diagram later on. And last but not least, there was some kind of growth planning and proper management. Later on, the Arabs actually lost their way. I want to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, but they knew that they have to grow the Wakaf. And we have a problem now in Singapore. You have big Wakafs that are not developed. In those days, the Arabs, because they are ethical capitalists, you don't only set up a mosque, you want the mosque to become something else. So there was a lot of growth planning, and this is a diagram uh, to show you how 
they actually deal with the, with the wakaf, right? So you have the board of trustees and investment committee. They will set up cash wakaf as capital. They will also take money, like I said just now, this uh, synergy with other Muslims. They will take some other money from the other wakafs and then they will inject it into projects. In that project, they will do venture capitalists, they take loans, and then they, they will get profits from rentals of houses that they develop, and it fits back again to the wakaf. So it's like a, what we call as a self-perpetuating system. Uh, the wakaf takes a life of its own. And it, this can only be possible if your mind is driven by capitalism. If your mind is driven by, inshallah, brother, we will make some money out of this. It will never work. These people were more interested in making money and more money and more money, not for the purposes of accumulating wealth, but more for the purposes of benefiting uh, the Muslims out there. And that's why for people of my family, from the Hadrami family, we do not see money as the root of evil. We see money as a magnifier of good. And this is the difference. Most Muslims say that money is the root of evil. No. Money is a, is a magnifier of good. With more money, you can do more good. And this is, this is something that we need to, to, talk, to talk about. So how did the work